Pour écouter cette session en français, veuillez cliquer en bas de votre écran sur l'onglet Interprétation et sélectionner le drapeau français. Hello. Bonjour. Barry Saleho. On behalf of Ikle Africa, the African Center for Cities, our future cities, Red Cross Crescent Climate Center, and partners, we're excited to welcome all of you to the Rise Africa 2022 Action Festival. Rise Africa has been growing since 2020 as a platform for thinkers, doers, and enablers committed to inspiring action for sustainable cities. This year's theme is creativity. For me, this means blending skills to be able to communicate the climate change complexity in rapidly urbanizing cities. I think we have such untapped potential in Africa when it comes to creativity. I love the idea that we need to create space to be creative. I think so often we rush into trying to act immediately um, and creativity is a a good reminder to sit back and to really tap into the capacities we have. I think agency is finding ways of giving power back to people, to groups, to young people, especially on a continent where it's a very young population. The, the, the value, the inputs from the youths, people who are considered inexperienced, have valuable contribution and they're really taking that into consideration. I think what agency means to me is change from, from the ground up. The importance of urgency is the recognition of the past and the recognition that we've lost time. Urgency is about acting now to build more inclusive, productive and resilient cities. There's this need to creatively redesign and unlearn and explore new ways of thinking. The festival is hosting 33 sessions with 135 provocateurs from across Africa and the world. Every session aims to show new ideas, showcase ongoing action, and launch new initiatives, bringing participants together to chart a new route forward. We hope that the festival program will inspire you. At the festival, we encourage you to showcase your business and projects, build lasting partnerships, unleash your creative potential commit to sustainable action. Rise Africa is about translating ideas into action. What actions are you going to commit to this festival? Before the session begins, it is important to note that you're being recorded. And by participating, you are given the consent to be recorded. All recordings will be available on the program page after the festival. Creative expression is vital for creating new futures for our cities. And so we invite you to enter this session in the spirit of creativity and dreaming. Je vis avec un mal dont je ne suis pas le porteur. Je vis avec un mal qui me donne de l'espoir. Atteint de l'albinisme, déficience intellectuelle, handicapé physique, malentendant, malvoyant, je suis dédaigné par la population. Exclusion, désaffiliation, Je suis exclu de la société. Ils disent que je suis différent d'eux. Discrimination, marginalisation. Je vis en marge de la société. Je suis la risée de la société. Stigmatisation, ségrégation. Je proteste contre les travers de la société. Je refuse ce mode de vie. Inclusion, insertion. Nous promouvons l'alphabétisation. L'éducation inclusive. L'accès aux infrastructures, l'accès aux services sociaux pour les personnes vivant avec un handicap. La création d'un système distributif pour réduire la pauvreté. La reconnaissance du travail non renuméré. La réduction du chômage à longue durée. La valorisation de l'égalité pour toute la communauté. Je suis différent d'eux. Le handicap n'est pas une fatalité. Sachez que mon handicap a fait de moi une bombe à épanouissement. Sachez que mon handicap a fait de moi une bombe à épanouissement. Can you hear me? Um, you're echoing. I think maybe you've got two systems on. Okay. okay. Maybe your phone and your laptop at the same time in the same room. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Oh. Okay. Okay. Is that better? It's still an echo. 
Um, can you please log out of one of your? Um, yeah, we'll just mute it. Out of two? We'll just mute one. Okay, is that better? Good morning. I'm so sorry about that. Yes. How's that? Yes, we can hear you. You can hear me now? Yes. Okay. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this session on new and reclaimed islands, and in particular, the focus is on Gracefield Island. Lagos is a city that is known to be made up of islands. It is a city that its long history and geographical situation as a city of, of islands has played a, a major role in its emergence over the years as a, as a commercial hub of West Africa and indeed of Nigeria. Um, but today we're going to talk about the phenomenon of the fact that Lagos has new islands that come up. And in particular, we are going to focus on Gracefield Islands. With us today, we have Olufemi Babalola, who is the CEO of Gracefield Islands. We have with him Ozo Medina Yomwafo, who is the urban planner. And we also have Chuka Ihono, who is the chairman of Open House Lagos and an architect. And we also have Stephanie Adisa, who is also an architect and also a member of the advisory board of Open House Lagos. I'm looking forward to a very in, in, insightful and impactful discussion about the, the environmental changes, the, the impact that these new islands will have along the coast and any um, environmental issues that, that they may have. So I'm going to ask to start off with Mr. Babalola. Um, Femi, would you like to introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about Gracefield? And I believe there's a video that you have to show us. Okay, good afternoon. Everyone, um, it, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can everybody hear okay. you? They can. Yes, can I'm sure wave? they can. <laughs> okay. Um, it's my pleasure to join this session and to tell you a little bit about uh, Gracefield Island. Um, first, I must commend the organizers of um, uh, this Rice Africa session. I think your initiative uh, is a very good one. Um, they said the new world will thrive on ideas and it's organizations like Q that create platform for those ideas and where those ideas exist that help to amplify it. Uh, so well done, well done to the advisory board. Now, Gracefield Island, yeah. Uh, Gracefield Island is informed by the vision of that Right across Africa, we need proper communities. Uh, if you look at what, if we take Lagos as an example, how the urban environment has grown. And I'm using that word grown advisedly. I did not say as developed. The way it has grown um, is such that um, what you have in this vibrant city uh, is more of chaos than organized development, such that you then have traffic at every turn, at every hour of day or night. So we just believe that um, there must be pockets of uh, sanity and orderly development. And that basically drove uh, the vision for Gracefield Island. Um, you see the phrase everywhere, live, work, and play. But you ask yourself, how many neighborhoods actually offer live, work, and play these days uh, anywhere around uh, our great city of Lagos? So it's in that quest to create that integrated community where people can truly live in a neighborhood, work in that neighborhood, and play in that neighborhood. Uh, 
That's what is driving Gracefield Island. Now in doing that, sustainability is a key issue of what uh, we've set out to achieve. Uh, again, if you look at our city, how easy is it now to say that you are going to ban plastic in Lagos, Lagos State? Um, it's possible, but it's gonna be very tough. But you can start having pockets of neighborhood, pockets of communities where you can ban plastic. Uh, Gracefield Island is one of those communities. I dare say we are gonna be one of the early starters in terms of that sustainability push where it is part of a lifestyle. It's not just an action, it's just not an event. It's just how people live, you know, where you sort your waste into glass, into plastic, into uh, regular uh, botanical waste and what you can then recycle. Um, so we are focused on that one. And in all this, to still not lose the vibrancy that you have in Lagos, to make a community truly cosmopolitan. These are the key drivers of uh, Gracefield Island. And maybe I should stop at that point, just in case I don't need uh, to ask me more questions or anyone else. Yes, well, I, what I, I was hoping is that I believe that you have a video. Yes, we do. Okay, so perhaps it might be interesting for the audience to watch the video, um, let us share your vision like that. And then we can really key in because while you're explaining, while what you're explaining sounds fascinating, but I think if you watch your, your animation, we can really key in and then we, then we can en encourage people to ask questions after. Absolutely, okay. okay. Um, Kim, would you be so kind? We are showing the group yes, video. I will. Yes, I will share it now. Thank you.
Mr. Babala, would you like to talk us through what we are looking at? Um, I think I'll uh, continue talking to you about the vision and um, the rationale for the project while I leave the urban planner to talk to the video itself. Absolutely, but do go on so, so, so that we can enjoy your video and understand the vision as well. Exactly, you know, because uh, one of the things that people usually ask us is why another, why an island? Why not build on existing land? Indeed. And again, like I said, when you look at how Lagos has grown, uh, for those of us who have been here for many decades now, uh, you, you can see how, like I said, it has grown, it has not developed in an orderly fashion. So if you look at and what should be an icon of Lagos, for instance, the National Theater in Igomu. The National Theater is a place that if you do not have any business there, you do not go there. The neighborhood is simply not attractive to you to go there. So you find that there are Lagosians who have never been to the National Theater. And I think I can take a bet and say that some of us uh, participating in this session might never have been to uh, the National Theater. That is how disorderly Lagos has grown. Uh, so it's so it's almost like um, every orderly neighborhood deserves its own slum. Every Koyi must have its own Obalende. Every Ikeja GRA must have its own Oshodi. You know, it's uh, with uh, due respect to those neighborhoods uh, that, that are now properly developed, you know. So it's very necessary for us to say that, look, we need to create uh, an oasis uh, where we can show that it is possible to have this brilliant weather that we have in Nigeria and in Lagos and have a well-ordered community. So that's the very reason for the, for uh, resorting to reclamation, you know. And also because people assume that reclamation by its very nature uh, is not very good for the environment. It's actually um, not the case. Uh, particularly if you look at the lagoon, lagoon is a large body of water uh, that is very shallow in many places. Absolutely. Because it's very shallow, uh, you find that water transportation is actually very limited in Lagos. People say, oh no, we have water everywhere. Why are we not using water transportation? Um, waterways are actually like you are constructing ropes. You actually construct waterways. They usually do not occur naturally. But because Nigeria uh, Lagos is actually, the lagoon is shallow, waterways now become very necessary to be constructed in Lagos. And if you are going to construct waterways, that means that you are going to dredge the sand away from the path that you want to use for your waterways. So put um, well, uh, well uh, envisioned, reclamation is actually good for the environment. In our own case, when we move to our own location, uh, very few uh, water creatures exist, maybe crabs in the main. But by the time we started our reclamation, we are finding new bird life, a lot of seagulls, a lot of white heron, a lot of gray heron uh, coming to nest on the island. We have migratory birds coming here twice a year. So we've seen that positive impact uh, just for the fact that we have this place coming up on the lagoon around us here. So we find that to create a sort of community we envisage where young children in primary school can ride their bike to their school and feel safe within the neighborhood because it doesn't feel like it's an estate. It feels like it's a city. So you can do a lot of the things you do in a city. The intention is that we are going to have a school, of course, sports center, uh, supermarket, hotels, you know, all the things that make a city life you are going to have on this, uh, uh, on this island. So you, to have that and have it in an orderly fashion where people abide by rules means that um, the easiest and clearer way, the clearest way for us to achieve that is actually to reclaim the island. And we are very happy 
that we have uh, the backing of government in that. Now, the next that's, question, that's, uh, go on. Erica. Okay, no, no, that's very interesting. And I'm your point of view, because I mean, of, of course, Nigeria is known for its bird life, actually, because we are on the migratory parts of, of the birds. So it's interesting that, they, that they've seen this new land come into life. I think, oh, okay, this would be nice. But how do you in, intend to engage with them when everywhere is built up? And that would be my first question. And my other question is your comments that you referred to the less desirable um, communities, shall we say, how have you taken that into, into consideration? Is your is 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 Great Field, for instance, only intended for a certain graphic? Um, is it what will happen if people of who who perhaps don't fit your demographic, perhaps who need to service the the needs of your demographic? Where will they live? How how in fact? How will gentrification now not ignore the fact that there are traditional communities in Lagos who also have to be catered for? Okay, thank you. I'll start with the first question uh, in terms of um, ensuring that we um, have a project that works with nature, that's eco-friendly. Um, of course, our design, as you would have seen uh, on the fly-through, uh, which I'm sure uh, Ozo will talk to in greater detail, uh, layout has actually provided significant green areas mm -hmm. uh, where we have deliberately created areas that will sort of be sanctuary, um, not just for birds, for other animal life around us to protect existing ones and to attract new ones. That's one. Number two, uh, we are not just doing it using consultants and doing it within our own knowledge alone. We actually have a very long-standing relationship with the NCF, the Nigerian okay. Conservation Foundation. Uh, we, we cooperate very, very closely. Uh, I think they were still with us here on Monday. Uh, there is a major, major tree planting program that they are launching tomorrow, actually. Uh, okay. in Lagos State, and uh, they've chosen us as one of the two locations where that tree planting program is taking place. So it's something that we are very conscious of in terms of making sure that not only do we protect the environment, we actually enhance the environment. Um, we have very active environmental management plan. We consult with the Institute of Oceanography to be sure that we are not disturbing marine life in any way. Now, the oh, second... Okay. Go on, sorry. No, no go on. I, I, I was just yeah. going to say that that after you finish this, I'm going to invite um, Chuka to now join the conversation. Please go on. Okay, thank you. Now, the second question is about the demographic. So uh, <laughs> I'm just laughing when you, when you ask that question. Yes, um, there is one sense of you want to make, you want to make it very orderly. The second side of it is how open do you want to be? Uh, again, because we've said we are urban planning for Gracefield Island is to make it function like a city. If it's going to function like a city, that means that it's not an estate where you basically say that, uh, why are you dressed like this? You cannot come in, why are you coming to visit? Um, so that makes us open to first all demography. If you are going to have stores and hotel on your island, that means that you must be open to everyone. Uh, because we also believe that you cannot have a community that actually locks a sizable part of the population out simply because of um, either financial power or social status. That's one. But we have surrounding indigenous, indigenous communities here, and we have programs that uh, we do. Uh, we won't even like to call it CSR. Uh, for us, it's not something you are doing as a matter of charity. It's something we do because it, 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 it's, it's just the natural thing to do. 
um, we interface with them, not just when they are doing the, um, the, their cultural festivals or during festive seasons like Christmas or Sala. We have specific programs in terms of trying to bring them up. We have um, World Environment Day every year where we go to the community, try to show them how they can manage their waste better. We currently have one that I think we are launching in a couple of weeks, which is to try and get them off the habit of using firewood. But if you say they shouldn't use firewood because of deforestation, what is the alternative? The alternative would be to use cooking gas um, and, um, and the like. So we've actually already acquired the cooking, cooking gas and the gas burners, the cookers for them, which we are launching as a program, not just as a matter of charity, take and use. It's, it's, it's a health program, it's an environmental protection program for us because we help in the deforestation campaign we help with their health, these particularly women um, using firewood to cook and uh, with all the damage that is caused to their eyes. So we work um, very well with the indigenous community around us and uh, we welcome all strata of the society on Graceful Island. Oh, lovely. Chuka, as the chairman of Open House Lagos and an architect in your own right, I was, I was, um, in, intrigued when Femi had referred to the National Theatre because I know how you feel about that. What's your response to, to, to the fact that, um, to the point Femi has made that Lagos is chaotic, is in disorder, and that the best solution should be to create new um, outposts of life for them? Um. Okay, um, I don't know if I'm going to sort of like launch into my actual topic of um, gentrification and reclamation. I don't want to say versus reclamation because it's not a competition actually, um, mm -hmm. but one just has to be aware that it is necessary sometimes to, to, re to gentrify or rather than reclaim. And in some other instances, reclaim. There's, there's reasons for both. Um, National Theatre, um, I think, was placed in Igomu um, by poor planning. Um, anyone who thought they were going to drag theatre goers to Igomu by placing it there simply made sure that much later on, a private entity like Newzon would have a would have flourishing business on Lagos mm -hmm. Island. That's basically what it is. You you know, a city develops and sometimes you can't quite tell how it's going to develop. But when it starts to, you've got to respect that and you've got to start working with what you have. You know, if you know Igomu is not the right place, don't put it there. You can't force the issue. Uh, move somewhere else and um, look for something that better fits uh, Igomu, you know. And um, I think that's the problem. That part of the problem with Lagos is that we're not looking very well at what we have in order to see what we can do to improve the haphazardness of the of the city. Um, I don't know if you want me to carry on with please my- Please go on, please. Okay, now- <laughs> Please go on, because, now, because, I'm, because after you, we are gonna bring in Stephanie and- Stephanie, um, yeah, okay, also, excellent. And, and hear their, their views on this. I just want to, um, to make sure that everyone has a, a chance to speak before we run out of time. Okay, very and, quickly. And yeah. Stephanie has a video that I know she'd like to show us. Right. Okay, very quickly. I mean, gentrification is actually a process where, whereby the character of a poor area is um, changed by, let's say, the influx of more well-off people. Um, but I want to use it synonymously, you know, if you permit me, the license to do so. I want to use it synonymously with refurbish, refurbishment and renovation. As of, I don't want to bring in class systems here. Um, I think that um, um, what we have with, um, what, what I'm trying to talk about with gentrification of Lagos is more of the renovation and the refurbishment of Lagos. And, um, when you look at um, the way Lagos has developed, 
uh, there's been a tendency for the well-off to want to live in what we call the island. Now, the island actually started off, to be honest, as Lagos Island, Ikui, and Victoria Island. And that was it. Lagos Island takes, takes in places like Onikon, you know, and then you get to Southwest Ikui and Old Ikui and Southeast Ikui. And then now Ikui has expanded anyway with Banana Island, Parkview, um, Osborne, Dolphin. And then towards Victoria Island. Now it has become, it, it's now about Lekki as well. It started with Lekki phase one being sort of drafted into the, into the, into the, the, um, the, um, the society of the island or whatever you want to call it. But now it's, it appears to be moving further down the Lekki Expressway. So we don't, I mean, I don't even know where it stops now, uh, where one might say, okay, now let's draw the line. Um, you're, not, you're not really on the island anymore, what we call the island. Not necessarily that you're not on an island, like Gracefield is an island, you know. Um, and Lekki, I think that- in fact, it's not an island, is it? It's a- Yeah, it's a peninsula. Peninsula. A peninsula. Yes, yeah. Yes, that's why, exactly. That's why, yeah, that's why in the end, it's all becoming very, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's we, we, so Coming that's why when we say it, but, but we know that what Lagosians are referring to as the island, they really mean those areas close to water. You know, you're, you're talking about, you know, we, we don't want to get into a semantic argument about what the, an island really is. To them, the island is simply because they just see water boundaries everywhere and they feel surrounded by water. And that's what an island, by the way, is. So let's leave them. If they feel they're on an island, good for them. So <laughs> that's, by, that, that, that's... <laughs> by that definition, Ikorudu could also be an island. Exactly. <laughs> yes, I think I think the problem with Ikorodu is that to get to Ikorodu, you go well right through the mainland. So mm -hmm. that perception of it being, it can't be. It's not on the island, you know. Uh, you, you, I mean, those those who know Lagos very well know exactly what I'm saying about how the mind is shifting Absolutely. towards this area, the Lekki area, but which, which actually takes its roots from Ikui and Victoria Island, which were very. Um, desirable areas, maybe they still are. Uh, and so Lekki fed off that desirability and then it's running the, with it. From the proximity. From Ikoi and Victor Island, yes. Because that's how, you, that's how it works. You have yes. a very expensive area and if you sit next to it, you are likely to, you know, it's going to rub off on you, that sort of thing. Um, now, um, reclamation is mostly, um, is, is landfill. And it can be a low-lying water, water areas, wetlands, swamp. Or in the case, like in the case of Gracefield Island, a completely new body of, 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 uh, of land, uh, you know, surrounded by the water. And um, sometimes it can be a negative thing. It can lead to flooding and disturb the movement of water, the natural path that water you know, especially in a lagoon, which is inland water, as opposed to an ocean, which has strength and force. Um, so it can cause, you know, that sort of thing where you start seeing water drying up in areas. Uh, it has happened um, right by Parkview and Banana Island. Um, and, uh, and we all know why that happened. They simply blocked the way the water moves. And um, that's what you have now. You've got lots of dirty, um, um, uh, muddy, surround instead of beautiful water. Gentrification allows for reuse and adapt and readaptation. And that's very important to city development because a city has character. And when you go back to look after it, you can build on that character. New areas have to develop their own character and they cannot develop this character in a short time. It will take up to 30, 40 years to begin to understand the character of a particular area. And at the moment, if we go by what we've seen in Lagos, one would say that the new areas are actually tending to be disastrous in character. And so Gracefield has that um, tough task of showing that we can turn that tide by creating something new that has character. Um, Grace would be a, a town, really, not a city. I'm going to stop um, you there so that we, okay. can, we can bring in Ozo now because um, okay. I'd like Ozo as an urban planner to 
to talk to us a bit on the issue Chuka has raised of character in a city, character and the character that, and to, to impose that against the character that Gracefield wants to communicate to its um, um, inhabitants. I mean, Lagos is almost in itself a character. It has, it's, it's, it, people have lived here for over 500 years. How, how do you distill that into Gracefield Island and not just have it a cookie cutter, little houses that all look the same? Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. If I can, I think everybody else can. Okay, yes. Uh, thank you very much. Um, you see, when you look at Lagos and you talk about character, it is very difficult in a way to actually um, categorize the character of Lagos in terms of uh, planning, in terms of architecture, in terms of all the uh, uh, features that define the character of a city, because there is no, you know, there is no holistic approach in terms of the planning, in terms of implementation, and so many other things. What you have in most cases is um, a beautiful architectural masterpiece, just standing there, standing on its own without, uh, uh, without conscious effort to make sure that the surrounding, the environment, all the things that make, that gives a city character without conscious, uh, 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 conscious effort to make sure that it's actually, uh, um, it's actually properly done in such a way that the whole city is seen and uh, um, to make sure that the whole city can be can be can be def well defined, and people can appreciate appreciate it in terms of the physical planning, in terms of uh, which 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 uh, goes into the the behavior also of people, which uh, goes into their I mean social life, um, entertainment, and the whole and the whole thing like that. Mm -hmm. You know, but when you talk about Gracefield, and that's why, uh, uh, that's part of the reason why Gracefield um, is happening. Gracefield uh, uh, is trying to redefine this in terms of creating a blank canvas, a new creating that land itself where you can define both. Uh, uh, the individual features on the island and its environment as well. You can define everything that goes on around it and be able to create that sort of um, environment that you actually want to have. How many, um, how many if I can just ask um, to follow from Chuka's comments that a uh, Gracefield would be more of a town than a city. How many inhabitants is Gracefield expected to, to host? Okay, Gracefield is planned to accommodate 25,000 uh, people, 25,000 in population. Okay, this who will me. live there? Or, and obviously okay. that will be yeah, increased we, by, by the amount of people who perhaps come in there to work, right? Commuters um, as well, yes. Yes, commit, uh, commuter population of about 5,000. Is projected okay. Okay. on daily basis. So, yeah. so it's a very small town. It's not even a, you know, it's a very small town. Okay. Okay. Let me. <laughs> let me. Let me. Let, let me explain. You know. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Can I? Can I come in? I'll yes. come to Go the issue. Yes, I'll come to the issue of city, but I just like to talk about gentrification that Chuka talked about. Uh, yes, you are very right. Gentrification is actually should be a conscious way to also develop our city. But I also believe that we have not done that. I can't remember an area where we've done that. I grew up in Yaba, and Yaba was such a lovely area. 
uh, when I was growing up. I won't tell you the year so that I won't start looking very old. <laughs> you know, but Yaba was such an organized environment. All the bus stops in Yaba, they were equidistant from each other. You knew where the schools were. Churches were in our community, but they never disturbed the residential neighborhood. So well planned. Now, a lot of those houses now are some 60, 70, 80 years old. And we've Even not. Even over tried... 100. Exactly. But we've not tried to gentrify by either strengthening them or rebuilding the them to the beautiful Brazilian architecture. You know, all we do is knock them down, then put a three, four story building on 600 square meters. And that's, all of us can see the results. Femi, that's a topic I can talk about all day. I mean, you can tell that's from my true. surname where, <laughs> where I come from. I'm going to just quickly ask Stephanie to join. Um, she has a video um, of a, a visit that Open House made with some lovely drone shots. And um, can you please introduce us to the video and why Open House went to visit it? And then let's all have a, a discussion because it's not on our side. Okay. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, <clears throat> sorry, um, the video will be playing in the background and uh, Open House Lagos um, has a yearly festival theme, which is this year Lagos New and Reclaimed. So the organization is trying to shed light on all the new projects that are coming up in the city since uh, reclamation, sand filling and the alteration of the city's boundaries are really nothing new. It's been going on for 150 years actually. And what we see now is not at all what the city looked like 150 years ago in terms of its boundaries. So uh, this is why we have engaged with uh, Gracefield Island and why we are having this conversation now to understand better, you know, um, what moves people, the people of Lagos to go in this direction of creating new cities um, or areas rather than um, using what is already existing. And we've taken from this conversation that has already taken place, I think there is a general longing for more meaningful places in Lagos. Right now, uh, a lot of places are not accept, uh, accessible to the general public. And I think this is one of the driving factors for new developments to come up. So now the question is, how do we create a meaningful place and what makes a great place in general, right? And what this means in the Nigerian context. So to me, um, or let's say the general theory of placemaking says that a great place means that they are accessible and well connected to other important places in the area that they are comfortable and protect a good image, that they attract people to participate in activities there. And uh, that it's a social environment where people want to gather and also visit over and over again. And from what uh, Mr. Babalola has mentioned, in his childhood, places like this uh, still existed plentifully in the city, which may not be the case at the moment. So I think it's about transforming uh, public spaces so that the people can have a connection to these places. And um, now it is also about, you know, their well-being and happiness. So places that can foster exchange and a lot of activities. So if we think about what that means for Lagos, we are in a tropical climate. And the first thing that makes someone feel well is shade. And uh, the easiest way to provide shade is trees, right? Which are really lacking in the city at the moment. So this is uh, something that can be taken on for new developments um, to create more meaningful places, for example. Or in terms of existing spaces, um, a bridge, under a bridge can create shade. That's why you can see that in, the, in, the, in this existing uh, city of Lagos, you have a lot of uh, activity happening under bridges, although sometimes they are not uh, the most desirable activities. But um, I think with this new city of Gracefield Islands, there is a great potential to create 
meaningful places, also together with the new residents that are going to live there, since you, do, you can start from scratch and also include uh, placemaking planning processes into uh, the way the city is being developed and therefore create a positive urban environment with the inhabitants together. Thank you, Stephanie. And I think that your, um, this presentation has actually sh shown that um, I think for me shows that the animation of um, Graceful Island in, in terms of, of the hopes, there, there is actually a reality that we can see on ground. That, that, that last picture particularly where you can see the island and you can see the rest of, of Lagos in the background. It's a stunning view and I hope that, um, and I guess this is for Femians, I, I, something that, that personally I think Lagos could benefit more would be a way that people who live in a space actually have access to the view. So I hope that, partic that particular last view we saw, I hope that can be like a kind of marina where perhaps the people can go and walk, they can have like, you know, restaurants, your hotels, and it will not just be a view that is only for people's back gardens, but can be a, a public kind of space. I'm going to ask um, Chua and Stephanie if they have any questions for Femi and Ozo, and if not, I'm going to ask the people who are watching if you have any questions, could you put them in the chat quickly, and I will address them to whoever you want them to be addressed to. I believe the first question in the chat of how are we going to make, um, how will grace be made accessible? I believe Femi had already, already answered that. So, and Chuka and Stephanie, any questions for Femi and also and vice versa? Um, I actually have a question that just ties together with uh, what I just talked about. So uh, personally speaking, as an architect, I always find it very challenging to make a space that is also more accessible and that has a positive impact on the urban surrounding because of the current security situation. So we can, as also mentioned, we can make the most beautiful space and most beautiful building but how can we tie it to the street level? How can we tie it to what, what um, pedestrians and other people in the city uh, experience without uh, affecting the security and affecting, you know, its, its way of performing? So I would love to hear more about what kind of, what is your plan to create meaningful spaces in Gracefield Island? and what your planning challenges also are in the process, because I know it's surely not easy. Thank you. Femi, over to you. Okay, me? Okay. Oh, also, or both. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take the first one from you, uh, uh, regarding access to the waterfront. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe also can then take the balancing of security with access. Okay. Uh, yes, um, the island is actually designed to give not just residents, the commuters, visitors, access to the waterfront. Okay. There are very, very few Good. properties okay. that, that will have the waterfront exclusive to themselves. We actually have a promenade okay. uh, right. to, the, to, to the east of the island. And the promenade is not just giving access. Again, it answers another issue that you raised earlier in terms of the demography. Part of what we want to achieve on the promenade is actually a strip where you have street food of Lagos, uh, so that it's not just the sort of food and snacks you find in five-star hotels alone that you eat when you are visiting Lagos. You know, where you come to Grace Food Island, you see some authentic food uh, okay. that are actually indigenous to Lagos on, on, on the promenade. And we have that on two key sections. The South Key and around the Lakaban that we've shown you. 
Uh, I'll leave also to answer the balancing of access to buildings and security. Uh -huh. Also, you need to unmute. You need to unmute. Okay. Uh, yes, very. Okay. Yeah, so right from the beginning when um, the studies and urban design for Gracefield started, we actually uh, took this into consideration. As such, um, we mentioned to you earlier that Gracefield is designed to feel and function as a city. As such, there is need for people to feel welcomed, especially uh, to the um, business districts, and uh, there is also the need for access to be restricted, you know, to places where uh, people need their privacy. So uh, what we've done is, uh, Gracefield is designed, of course, to be in zones. So we have the residential, both high, medium, and low density areas. We have the mixed use development and we have the uh, business district where we also have the public buildings. So in terms of access, people are, people are going to be, of course, um, people are going to have uh, um, access to, to the places that are, uh, that are more of public places where you have the office buildings, where you have the exhibition center, where you have the retail centers and all that. And at the same time, we've uh, planned the residential zone in such a way that you can actually move around to appreciate the surroundings, you can appreciate the architecture, but in terms of uh, gaining access there, access is actually restricted. So as much as you're welcome, because Gracefield is going to be a point of attraction for people, given the planning and the features that we are going to have there. So we, 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 we've planned it to be a point of attraction, a tourist place where people will look forward to going to see. But at the same time, we consciously made uh, planned it in such a way that you don't just have access to anywhere without, you know, without being, uh, um, you, there are places that are restricted for certain kind of people, such as the residents and the uh, places that are meant for public, people can go there. We yes. have a central park that welcomes everybody. Okay. You know? And uh, when you talk about security, even in terms of the planning, we have, a, we have a perimeter road that goes around the island such that coming from the water, your point uh, place of access is not the buildings on the island. You have to go through the promenade, which is a, which is a common place for everyone. You have to cross the road and you know, and these are the places where we are going to have uh, blanket CCTV that you know watches all movements and all that. So we've planned all this into the uh, uh, city architecture as a whole. Fantastic. Thank you. So, thank you. So yeah. I'm going to ask everybody to just take a quick one minute closer because we are coming to the end. I'll start with Chuka. Chuka, over to you. Um, okay, yeah, I'll just um, round up by saying that um, I was I was happy when um, uh, Mr. Babalola mentioned Yaba because I was going to mention Yaba Surulere Ebutemeta as an axis that is um, that is ripe for gentrification. I also think that the private sector has failed us in in the gentrification process. Um, they are the ones who should do this. And they should do it with a high level of professionalism and with government bringing to bear the regional, urban and regional planning laws so that mm -hmm. we still keep these areas, we keep these developments in check. Um, so yeah, there are areas, Victoria Island is so ripe for, for, for gentrification. Amadou Bello facing the ocean is a brilliant boulevard which should have had hotels, casinos, nightclubs Absolutely. and all that. 
that is such a missed up or a missed an opportunity we're missing. I don't know if we missed it, but anyway, those are the kind of things I wanted to add to the general conversation. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Yeah, just to round up with uh, the general, you know, idea of placemaking again. I think in, in many functioning cities, it's actually the government's role to engage with NGOs, grassroots movements and inhabitants to improve, um, you know, existing places and make them meaningful. And the situation as we have it now almost puts everyone at, um, at responsibility to also engage in this process, especially new developments like Gracefield Island. And I'm excited to also hear more about how meaningful places can be created on the island and you know how this will make Lagos a better place. Thank you. Um, there's a quick question I'm going to set, give to Ozo quickly. Are there policies needed to encourage urban upgrading? So perhaps you could, you could include that question in your roundup and then I'll leave Femi to um, give the final comments before I close up. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, given all the challenges that, you know, and all the hurdles that needs to be crossed when you think about upgrading a city, urban renewal, you know, the, gentrif the gentrification that we are talking about. Because it is not something that comes easy, especially in this part of the world, when there is no uh, willingness from the people that are, uh, that are actually supposed to be the backing for the town planners, the, architect, the architects, and all the people involved to do this, you know? Because one of the challenge that this, uh, most of these people face when they put forth this proposal is, number one, of course, it is capital, capital intensive. Another thing is, uh, who knows who? Are you going mm -hmm. to, uh, what do you want to do with the building of this, my friend, this, and you know, and all that. It becomes a political issue. So that willingness, there is need for willingness from the authorities to actually, um, to, to, to actually uh, be willing to do this, to do it. So because of that, um, we, on the, on the grace field, we have a development guideline that's, um, that we uh, that we that we strictly uh, that we strictly abide by. We give to planners, architects, who are designing buildings on the island, and we actually take charge of this. We are not leaving it to anyone. So, gov where the government needs to be involved, we invite them. We sit together with them and decide on the best way forward for Gracefield because we don't want to create another, you know, uh, uh, another environment that will, rather we want to create an environment that will be sustainable and an environment that when the need arises, it will be very, uh, it will be easy for re uh, urban renewal and some other things to happen there and, for us to be able to have a sustainable city that can stay for over the years. Thank you. Um, so, sorry, okay, um, I'm Adike, if I may. Yeah, Please Adike, do. if I may just say. Please um, come in. Um, okay, um, in the comments section, um, Rise Africa um, gives us another, from what they say, we have another 40 minutes mm -hmm. um, of time, really. So, because no, I see the public, the others no, may want to ask questions. Yes, yes, but it's not an hour because this is CAT time and we are on WAT time. So we have like uh, 20 minutes. Okay, 20. Okay. Because there's one question somebody has asked twice. Somebody called Frida. Yes, which is, talking what, about... which, is, which is what I'm going to address to Femi now. Thank you. Right, okay. right. 
Okay. So, Femi, you you've spoken about it before, but I but um I think perhaps in view of the fact that um it's it's been brought up again, how and so in rounding up, I'd like you to particularly address this question: How have Lagos's lower income citizens been factored into the planning of Racefield Island? Um, sorry, that question again. How has Lagos state government done work? No. How has how have the lower income citizens of Lagos been factored into the planning of Bracefield Island? Um, like I said earlier, what we've done has been um, to develop a holistic program that takes in the whole community. Okay, but, so so if I may, in particular, will it in include affordable housing units? Yeah, that's where I'm coming to. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the project is capital intensive. So you are not going to start a project like this and then say that, how will I factor in the low income? First, you must have a viable business in the first place. And uh, second, which we still talk about, the bigger city itself, Lagos. Because we don't have an integrated community, you have a situation where people wake up at 4 a.m., 4.30 a.m., somewhere on Lagos Ibadan Expressway to come and work on this other part, side of town. And these are not necessarily the artisans. These are not necessarily the support staff. They are your no. middle level staff. Some of them are architects, they are lawyers, they are accountants, they are other professionals who are coming from outside town. We are driving two, three hours into Lagos to come and work. In traffic. Those that, sorry, exactly in traffic. And they do that five days a week, six, eight hours in traffic. Even here, we still experience it on Greystone Island for team members who live past Abraham Adesoya. It takes them four hours to get home. Now, those sort of people, you must create a situation where if they don't own property, the least they can do is to be able to afford to rent. You know, that is possible, but you are not going to definitely lower your market value because you want to open access to lower income people. It's to create an economy whereby those people can earn a better income. Therefore, if you go on our website, part of the things you will see is part of our vision is actually to be a destination for wealth creation. So we are not going to either minimize our value or reduce the um, economic gain to the property we are developing. No, what we are going to do is for those people that you have in mind who interface with us, either as contractors, consultants, or team members, their income level can go up. That is what we set out to achieve, as opposed to, oh, we want to be able to rent out an apartment for one million a year. That's not going to happen here. That's the reality, you know, but it's going to be more of an integrated community for the excellent standard we are going to achieve than you find elsewhere uh, on what we call Lagos Island. That's in Kohi, Victoria Island, like. Chuka, would you like to respond to that? Um, yes, I think it's 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 not, it's not the way Lagos is. It's not easy to force um, low low um, low budget housing um, on a scheme that is already um, up market basically. And I think Femi was trying not to sound so elitist by not saying the, saying it the way I did. But the truth is that's the way that's the the, the, the demography of that area of Lagos. What should have been, what should happen is that the major plan for Lekki, the Lekki overall plan, is where there should be an area created for this sort of housing by government, so that um, that is what feeds these people. Only government can take land which it could have sold to the public at very high cost and say, "Look, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it." You know, we can't do that because we work for money. You know, as as uh, you know, as businessmen, entrepreneurs. You know, you can't force it on Gracefield. You know, um, and I think that might well be the answer to it. In the overall plan, is there a feeder location for all the upmarket areas that actually? 
predominate in this area of Lekki and, and the island, you know, that concept of the island in Lagos, which actually refers to fairly expensive or well-off areas. Wow. And, um, before you answer that, um, um, Femi, there's, before you answer Shuka's um, question, there's a comment on the chat, which I think which you could also expand upon in response. So this person would like to ask how Gracefield Island fits into the Lekki Master Plan, which is some years old. Um, and the second question is, did Lagos State government approach the private sector or are these ideas brought in by the, the, the private sector? And in particular, is a concern that the general population is, is left out in these kind of discussions. And I think for that question, I think I would like to bring in um, everybody's comments on that. Is, uh, is, the, is, there, is there not a space where the population should be able to also be involved in the spaces in which they, they are going to live? So after Femi has commented, I'd like everybody on the panel to please have um, express their view on that last statement. Okay. Th thank you. Yes, um, it was actually our own idea that we wanted to do this. And I'll just refer very quickly to what you can say when we were talking about town or city and all that. And this project, part of the inspiration for it was Canary Wharf in London and Century City in Cape Town. Century City, when you drive into Century City in Cape Town, you have no doubt that you're in a city. Century City started as a 90 hectare development, but now it's 180, 180 hectares. But you have no doubt that you're in a city. Guess what? VGC is bigger than Century City. But when you drive into VGC, the feeling you get is that you are driving into a well ordered residential estate. You don't feel like you are driving into a city. That's why the C in the name, VGC, which means city. <laughs> and Canary Wharf is only 35 hectares. You'll be surprised to know. I imagine the sort of wealth they've created, imagine the value they've created to that part of London. So um, I'll leave that aside. Now, in terms of did we come up with a project or the government approach us, it was our own idea. This was an idea that we had and we approved government way back in 2007. And to correct an impression that this was something people, uh, some backroom deal done with friends and all that. It wasn't so. When we applied, there was no Lekki Master Plan launched. So the government told us, hold on, we have a plan that we are looking at, which is now what is called the Lekki Regional Master Plan. That master plan was launched in November 2007, and there was massive media campaign for everyone to attend the public hearing, which was done I think I think um, Lagoon Restaurant in Victoria Island over a period of two days, taking comments from members of the public. So the Lekki Regional Master Plan, I can talk about that authoritatively. It was after that, in, in um, taking into account all the comments that were received, that were received, that were marshaled into this master plan to give us the master plan law. So Lekki Master Plan is actually a law. But now talking about the master plan itself. And I think we can say this because something we've told government repeatedly. If there is anybody today who is flouting the Lekki Master Plan, guess what? It's the Lagos State government that is flouting its own plan. If there is any challenge we have on this project that we can count as the most serious challenge, is trying to get government to comply with its own master plan. You know, Chuka was talking about the distortion to the water body. That is so true. That is very, very true. We've got a 2.3 kilometer access road from the shoreline to our island. We plan to have a series of viaducts under the road. But even the ones we've done now, they are under threat because government is still approving projects that are not on the master plan, you know? So, uh, we have that, but for the benefit of those who want to know, yes, we are in total compliance with the master plan. And uh, next time, Rice Africa, you are doing a great job. Uh, don't underestimate the effect of what you are doing. 
I would suggest that you involve government. We always involve government in what we do. We want them to hear what I'm saying to you. I'll be happy to tell them to their faces, you know, because it helps. Because guess what? Again, sometimes they listen. <laughs> and, no, and, uh, and a two-way conversation is always very important. You always exactly. have to have that. You always have to have that. There can be no collaboration unless those, unless the parties yeah. actually do sit down and have that discussion. Um, exactly. Chuka, Chuka, Stephanie, what are your comments on are the population involved, sufficiently involved, not just in, in Gracefield, but in developing ideas for how the city will look and develop? I'll let Stephanie go first. Okay. <clears throat> so to me, currently, the general public is not enough involved and I think even when the media, when the government speaks through the media to people, there are a lot of people that don't have access to this information and are therefore left out, especially mm -hmm. when it's the regional uh, location, the regional inhabitants of, of a planned project. And I know, for example, that um, different NGOs already work on a mixed income housing scheme that um, would, once it's implemented, force very large um, development, starting from several hectares, to include a few, you know, mixed housing units in, in their projects. And I think this would be one way to go forward and to also tackle the problem with um, transportation and people not having access to, you know, services in their area or in their place of work. So I know it's really challenging to, to make the city inclusive. It's something that every single project is battling with because the population is so complex in terms of languages, uh, social background, cultural background, ethnicity, it's just very, a very little common denominator and therefore, um, you know, everyone must work extremely hard to come to a kind of common understanding. And I know it's not something that will be immediately solved. And I think it takes a long range of government laws to also improve the private sector's approach to these topics. So, Absolutely. So, so in fact, it's actually back to what we're saying. For even the government to do so, there has to be these kind of um, convened situations where discussions can be had. If not, the government won't hear, won't listen. And so the private sector still has to keep on speaking out in the hope that these conversations can be had. Um, Chuka, your response. Um, yeah, I think um, what I, I, I was just um, th this comment um, in, in in the chats in the chats about um, whether it is because it is 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 it easier to do new reclaimed land um, um, design than it is to gentrify? Could that be why there's a lot more of the new coming up? And um, so I think I will. Before I direct it to Femi very quickly, I'll just very quickly make a comment that yes. the thing is, I believe the answer is yes. And so Femi can counter it or say, yes, indeed it is. Because look, there's nothing wrong with doing what is easy or easier. Because look, this is all about business. Um, but what I see is that urban planning is usually not all about business. That's the problem. There has to be a point at which you're bringing in other factors, factors that look after everyone else. And um, I think that what, what, wh why a lot of people leave the old areas and don't gentrify, it's not because government has not made it more um, attractive for them. I think it's because it's easier. What it takes to, to I, I, I'm, I'm looking back at 1990, 19, in the 80s when I was in university and, um, uh, and a developer, um, Pal um, um, Palumbo, wanted to do a development just close to St. Paul's. And he had, from 1968 to 1988, when he wanted planning approval, he had bought about 16 properties 
all contiguous so that he could do his his development that would take over a, you know, a large portion of that area. That painstaking approach to property development, where you can actually pick up property one at a time in an area, which is what we don't have those sorts of people. We don't have anybody who would go to Ibeze, Mobia, Julu Street in Suruleri and literally buy everyone out and try to do something that's going to make the area more fitting for 2022 and beyond. We don't have them. It's a very bullish attitude to take and, they may, and we're not doing that. People, are, you know, there's an easier way out. And so, um, yeah, uh, maybe Femi can say what okay. he thinks about no, that. Yeah. I'm, no, I'm actually going to ask Ozo because he's the urban okay. planner. No, no, no. Let me let me let me take that first. For me, it's a developer, so let him <laughs> let me take that first. You see, this the sort of project we are doing. You do it because you have passion, and your passion must go beyond profit. You you don't do this for easy life. You don't do it for money. That is the truth. Because it's on the lagoon. The lagoon is under federal law. So, because I think someone wanted to ask about the compliance regime. So, to get federal approval took four years. Mm -hmm. Then, after you got the federal approval, then you've come to uh, you've got to come to state level. So, you don't do this one because it's easier. Number one, number two, if you want to do it properly, there is no easy way out. We will not talk about other people's projects, but. We've reclaimed our island to 2.3 meters above mean sea level. You need to check other developments around here and check their level for reclamation. Now, it's not easy. If we did it at 1.3, we'll still be fine. Which means for every two, one hectare we reclaim, we could have reclaimed two hectares. Okay. So that's a lot of money that we've sung that not just to comply with environmental impact assessment or the engineering safety standards, it's simply because you want to do it right. So the, to say gentrification or reclamation, they are not alternative to each other. In fact, in my view, they should go hand in hand exactly. together. Yeah. Yes. I still yeah. go yeah. Uh, uh, to church whenever I go in Yaba, because for me, Yaba holds childhood memories for me, and it gives my children that point of contact with my own background. Mm -hmm. It's all a lot easier for me. I'm driving across the Third Mainland Bridge when I'm doing that. So there is a reason that is valid for gentrification as well beyond profit. You know, and Steph said something in terms of um, carrying the community along how difficult it can be because there is no common denominator in terms of value. That is so correct. In fact, I believe that to have same urban renewal project, you cannot do it in a democratic way. The only thing that's going to de be democratic is that you are going to give everybody a chance to vent their views and opinion. That is all. And you take all those things into consideration, but they are not going to sit down with you and then take a final decision. I tell you, the recent ban that the government placed on commercial motorcycles could not be placed if the governor decided to do a referendum. The same citizen, the governor, and his team will think they are protecting will vote against it. So there are some things that when you want to do it in any society, you actually just do it. But you must be doing it because of overriding public interest, not for selfish purpose. And to do that, you are not going to wave arrogantly the people away. You are going to listen to them. But when you have a populace that you have let them grow on a diet of chaotic growth. Again, I'm not calling it development, a chaotic growth. They don't know what's right, what is wrong. It's just like you are telling your artisans, no, what is this uh, spare part you got? It's fake. It's telling you no size, it's original. Why? He's not telling you lies. That is the original he knows. And that applies to everything. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a challenging task, but it's a necessary task that all of us must do. Okay. And interesting um, aspect. Oh, Ozo, what are your views? 
Okay. Um, Mr. Papadana is so right. Um, there are a lot of challenges that comes with uh, um, gentrification. There is need for... Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, yeah. So, part of it is uh, getting the buying in of a lot of people, which won't be easy, so to say. Uh, but as an urban planner, I think one of the one of the main one of the most difficult thing is getting that willingness from the authorities. Mm -hmm. Willingness in terms of in terms of uh, making that uh, financial commitment. Willingness in terms of having that. Uh, uh, willpower to uh, to 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 um, to force some things on people because everybody will want to have their say while it sh it should not happen and then generally there is also the need to have uh, uh, an urban renewal program um, in that question. The, the, the person that asked, asked that question talked about carrying uh, the, the population along. You see, that's one of the key things that are missing in our, um, in our physical planning mm -hmm. and the sustainability of physical planning in Nigeria today. Even though the master plan is, uh, is uh, even though it is, a law, it is something that has to be kept the, as it is. What's that word I want to use? It is also a document that has to evolve. The same way, take for example the Lekki Regional Master Plan, the same way the government uh, called people to have their views when it was being developed. There, there was supposed to be a um, uh, a program that calls people again for a review, probably every three years, every four years, because there are so many islands, just as the person rightly put it there, there are so many islands that are coming up now, which was originally not in the master plan, but we see it today coming up, being okay, decided. Can I come in, please? Can I come in please? Yes. 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 I mean, because I actually, I actually do not agree with also in terms of calling people for a review. And I'm talking from personal experience. Um, because government came up with Lucky Master Plan, they allowed some new islands to be created. That, that's the very reason why the government itself is under pressure by those people also is saying should be called for review. There are the people that now say that my great grandfather had the plot of land by the lagoon. Therefore, I'm entitled to my own patch on the lagoon. Give me approval. You see, government must be very clear in its focus, must be very firm and disciplined. The people you want to involve are the people that actually cause you to go against the rules. That is the truth. You know, so we must actually be very careful in terms of this idea of carrying people along. People should be informed. They should be listened to, but the ultimate decision must be for the decision makers, the government and the private sector making the investment to be sure they protect the sanctity of the of the mass. What are you on that? Sorry? Sorry. What are your views on that? Go. Well, we what are your views on that? Um, Sorry, my views on yeah. opinions should be so. Hello, can you hear? Me? Yes, you're going off and on. on. I, I last comments that okay, okay. about review, yeah, review now, situation, calling ca calling government back to review what's going on. Is that what you're saying? No, you can review. I mean, like Kozo okay. said. Master plans are dynamic and all that, but we shouldn't right. overdo this idea of 
you are going back to the community after two years, after three years, and then yeah, I, you I, wonder, I, I, you'll just I be stuck. Absolutely agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, we are yeah. yeah. Well, you see, it all depends. I, I think it depends on a society. Perhaps we are not sophisticated enough to continue to go back to the community. Because to be honest, in, um, in, in more developed, uh, what I call more developed you know, uh, nations, they do it. They actually go back. And sometimes you, know, you could almost say that the, the community has become a nuisance factor. They really stop certain projects from, you know, from moving forward. Um, but you see, the thing about the democratic way of running things is that you will always run into, you know, these sorts of difficulties and you have to plan ways to get around them. You know, uh, of course, people can appeal, uh, but communities can actually be very, um, they can hold things back a lot. And I know that's why Femi would probably not want them involved after an initial <laughs> process, you know. But I think it's because we are not that sophisticated. That's why... I would probably tend to say that for now, it would be best to go with what Femi is saying, you know, but we need to get to a point where, yeah, we need to get to a point where we can trust our people to come to these sorts of places and um, a, a, a forum and, um, and, be, and be civilized and disciplined about what they are bringing forward. Okay, I think, I think that leads us to an interesting side discussion on education, not just um, ac academic education, mm -hmm. but just education on, on how things should be. What, what do we want? What, how do we want to ensure that um, people's minds are open to change? How people understand the importance of dialogue and also, importantly, the respect for other people's opinions and i think that um that all those are signs of of a community that is um changing itself for the better not just um people at whatever level saying it's my way or the highway i mean stephanie what do, do, do you think about that uh, well it's a tricky question uh, considering my uh, background is in Austria, where, for example, after the completion of a whole atomic um, power plant, the population has revolted against it. And now there is a law that no power, uh, atomic power plants shall be built in Austria. Mm -hmm. Most likely forever. But, uh, of course, this is a completely different... Um, you know, community and background and the people of Nigeria have other needs. So you can't make a direct comparison. And I think it's, it's always tricky to make a comparison with, with most other projects in the world. Um, even to say that uh, we are striving to achieve a city here or a city there in a different country, it is, it is Nigeria is in a more difficult position because it must almost create everything from scratch to find a unique solution. And that is why a lot of new projects have it harder compared to anywhere else where there is already a, a clear strategy that everyone kind of has agreed to. And this is not the case in Nigeria yet. Okay, now that's, that's a very interesting comment because it leads into a question from the chat which is should the goal be to take inspiration from unequal societies such as the high-rise developments of Cape Town or London? Femi what what are you what are your thoughts on that and in fact Chuka as well. Sorry can you take that again please? Okay so the question is and it's from the chat should the goal be to take inspiration from unequal societies such as the high-rise developments of Cape Town okay. or London. And I'm interpreting this question to be not just the development of Graceful Island, but the gentrification of the city as a whole. So yes. should, should the goal be to take inspiration from 
unequal societies or should we be striving to find a way that Lagos can be more inclusive and welcoming to all strata okay. of society? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Now, first, um, I don't know what the person meant by unequal society. Is it unequal within Cape Town or unequal within London, unequal between Nigeria and those other countries? where I said the, uh, the project took in inspiration from. But let's leave that as it is, and then say that what, um, there is this notion that a reclaimed island, or an island anyway, whether they reclaimed or natural, is elitist. Maybe. This is true. Maybe not. <laughs> but what is clear is that you have a set of productive people that are going to populate that development. By the nature of that demography, they bring development to their neighborhood. That is just it. But beyond that, the project itself can be designed as such. And to use the specific examples of Canary Wharf, Canary Wharf is a development that has a library inbuilt into the Canary Wharf Tower itself for the community. Canary Wharf is a development that has a post office built for the community there and the same thing for a police station. Now I go to Cape Town, Century City. Century City has a strip in its shopping area in the Canal Wharf where they have uh, shops given out to the local community at extremely subsidized rates. So when you see these projects and you see them as a latest it doesn't mean they are anti-people. And in the case of Canary Wharf, it brought development to the backwater of East London, where nobody wanted to go. Without Canary Wharf, East London today would not be served by any metro line. There is Jubilee Line, the most modern of the tube lines in the UK. You know, So uh, people need to open their mind up to know that you must allow productive people to flourish. In any country that is not developing as fast, part of the key challenge is that the middle class has not been allowed to flourish, which was what I referred to. When you have young people, vibrant people, living way out of town, cannot afford to live in the mid center of Lagos. They are commuting three, four hours to come to work in Victoria Island. And they do that four hours back. It's because that environment has not been created for them to be productive. So when you see projects that allow those people, even if they're not house owners, if they're going to be tenants, but they live a decent life and something that allows them to explore their talent even better, you must encourage it. So there is nothing that's anti-poor or anti-people here or pro-elite alone, it's pro-excellence. But if it's excellent and it's elitist, you really can't apologize for being excellent just because they describe it as being a latest, but that's not the driving force. On Gracefield Island, we have a lot of young engineers, we have a lot of young professionals working that will possibly not be working on projects like this. How many of, of these sort of projects in Lagos? Not more than 10, if they are up to 10. You know, so you must see that positive side of it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and now we actually have five minutes left, so I hope that, that our extra time has given us time to think about our, our final thoughts. I'm going to ask, I'm going to start with Ozo this time for his final thoughts, and we'll then go to, to and Stephanie, then Femi, and end with Chuka. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So um, I will start with um, telling everyone here that. Uh, Gracefield is um, Gracefield is being created to be a vibrant and inclusive society, uh, where uh, a place that would be a destination of choice for discerning uh, minds and uh, for a natural attraction for international companies and uh, foreign mission a place where young, uh, uh, vibrant talents will be able to hatch their vision, an inclusive society that, that will be able to accommodate um, um, 
you know, that, um, that vibrant mind that is looking for that, that space to actually carry out uh, his or her productive uh, activity. So we have, we have planned so many features on the island that will encourage that, such as our central park, the promenades, the uh, exhibition center, library, museum, and so many other things. And I will encourage everyone in this, on this, uh, in this uh, event, if you've not visited Gracefield Island, you are welcome to come for a visit at any time. I will be glad to take you on the tour. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ozo. Um, Stephanie. Uh, yes. So I would also like to use this opportunity to also refer to any future Open House Lagos programs this year that will talk about Lagos new and reclaimed. I'm really excited to hear, you know, the background and concepts of all other uh, reclaimed projects that we are um, that we're seeing right now in the city, and also to learn more about how the city has developed as a whole. I think learning from history can always help to you know plan for the future and make a more meaningful place. And I'm also looking forward to being more involved in creating meaningful places in, in new developments such as Gracefield Island. Thank you. Femi? Okay. Um, I say thank you to Rice Africa for this session. I've learned a lot from interacting with everyone. I think um, later on, I'll be talking to Steph. I would like to engage further with Chuka and Aduke. Uh, it on some of be a pleasure. Covered, uh, and what I think we, we, we can cover uh, in the coming months and years. Um, so thank you, very useful. Next time I'll just suggest that maybe we invite government. They can be useful. That's a, a good idea. Chuka? Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I think just to um, remind us that um, Nigeria is not a place with fair interest rates. It's also not a credit society. And that's why it's so difficult to deal with the issue of affordable housing against housing for people for whom that area appears to be, you know, what they can pay for. Um, and I think those are the sorts of problems we have. Um, and that's why government influence is very, very important. Um, um, what direction the country takes economically, financially and economically. Is, is, is what I think will help change many of the things, many of the problems we have um, with um, affordable housing, because that question keeps coming up in the chat. Mm -hmm. And I know why, I can understand why. I think we really do need to um, have a, a policy on that. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, thank you very much. I'd like to thank